Have you ever heard the word sovereign? It means to have complete power. Sometimes people use this word to refer to a powerful ruler, like a king. But no human king is really sovereign. There are some things they can't control at all. They can't turn broccoli into pizza. They can't even make everybody like them. But there is one king who is truly sovereign. This king is in complete control of everything that happens in the world and in your life. That king is God, the ruler and creator of everything. He made mountains and trees and dogs, and best of all, he made you. Psalm 135 verse 6 says, Whatever the Lord pleases, he does. This means that God has the power to do everything that he wants to do. Since he is sovereign and good, he keeps every promise that he makes. That is called being faithful. We learn more about a time God was faithful to keep his promises in the story of a man named Joseph. But the story doesn't start with him. It begins with a man who had two names. That man was Abram. God changed his name to Abraham. When you're sovereign, you get to rename people if you want to. One night, God told Abraham to go outside and look up at the sky. God said to Abraham, do you see all those stars? Try to count them. That sure is a lot of stars. Do you think you could count all of them? God then told Abraham his special promise. I'm gonna make you a great nation and you will have many descendants, which will be Abraham's kids, grandkids, great-grandkids, and so on. You will have as many descendants as there are stars in the sky. That's a big promise. Sometimes people make promises that they want to keep, but can't. That has never happened with God. Abraham's wife was named Sarai, but God changed her name to Sarah. Abraham and Sarah were old, really old. She was 90 and he was 100, and they had not had one child yet, but Abraham still believed God would give them a child. Do you know someone that old who had a baby? Me neither. But you see, that shows us that God's sovereign power allowed Abraham and Sarah to have this baby. If you believe in Jesus as your savior, you can trust God to keep his promises. He is faithful. As the years passed, Abraham's children had children. Abraham's son Isaac had a son too, and his name was Jacob. But his name wasn't Jacob for long. Yep, you guessed it. God changed his name too. He changed it to Israel. Wait a minute. You might be thinking, isn't Israel a country? Well, yes, you're right. But first, Israel was a man. Have you ever heard of the 12 tribes of Israel? These tribes or families started from the 12 sons of Israel. One of Israel's sons was Joseph, but God changed his name to, <laughs> just kidding, he only have one name, but he is very important. One day after the sons were grown, it looked like all of Abraham's descendants were in danger of dying and that God's promise of giving Abraham a lot of descendants was going to be broken. But God sent a deliverer, someone who would rescue Abraham's descendants who would become one of the most important people in the entire Bible. This deliverer would be one of Israel's sons. How would God choose which son would be the deliverer? Would it be the son who was the strongest or the one who was the smartest? Find out in the next episode.